why it's going to be getting so hot coming up in just a little bit. Well, the summer heat is here, and while some of us are lucky enough to work inside in the cool AC, others spend their 9 to 5 outdoors. Christina Mondragon spoke to some of those workers to see how they try to stay cool. Bike. It is critical to pay attention to symptoms of heat exhaustion, especially for those who work outside for a living. Owner of Mojo's Lawn and Landscape says one of the best things to do is to keep hydrated. I almost passed out a few times. Yeah. But uh, as long as I can sit down, take a break, cool off in the shade, get hydrated, drink liquid IV, you know, and that, that's what keeps us going right there all day. For painter Wilson Flores, Taking a break when working outside during the summer can be vital for those who spend the majority of their workday in the sun's rays. We always take a break for 15 to 20 minutes once we start to feel overheated or tired. Flores also says this summer is the hottest he's had to work in. Last summer it wasn't that hot, but this summer feels hotter. You feel the temperature more and you feel the heat more and it's stronger. In Lafayette, Christina Mondragon, KTC TV3. Doctors in Acadiana say the early warning signs of heat illness start with cramps, which may lead to nausea, vomiting, headaches, and even fainting. Doctors say the biggest mistake you can make not getting help quick enough. So certainly the studies have shown that the more we delay care in patients who are showing signs of heat illness, the more likely they are to have pretty negative outcomes, including death. So I think it, when, in, when in doubt, just call EMS, allow for the professionals to get there and assess the patients or assess the person who's overheated and, and get them to where they need to be. A reminder from LUS, there is a water conservation ordinance in effect, and there are fines if you don't follow the rules. The first offense is a written warning, and from there, the fines range from $50 to $500, which would be added to your utility bill. The rule is in effect through September 30th. And here's a look at the schedule. If your address is even, your designated watering days are Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday from midnight to 2 p.m. If you have an odd address, your watering days are Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday during that same time frame, and no one is allowed to water on Mondays. New tonight, if you live in Church Point, there is a boil advisory in effect. Earlier tonight, certain areas were without water, but we've learned the water has since been restored. It is recommended you boil your water for at least a full minute before consuming it. Paris by Paris headlines. We start in St. Landry tonight, where the Sheriff's Office is asking for your help finding the person who killed a recent high school graduate. According to Sheriff Bobby Guidros, deputies responded to shots fired call on Snows Road in Palmetto. That's right outside of Opelousas. There they say they found three people had been shot, one woman killed, two others injured. The sheriff tells us people gathered on private property to ride ATVs and horses. It was unbelievable. The helicopter and the sheriffs, all of the ambulances just um, it was a mess. Also in St. Landry Parish, deputies are looking for this stolen tractor trailer. The blue 2021 Peterbilt long nose model was stolen on Saturday and was last seen at the Quarters Casino. If you've seen it, call St. Landry Crime Stoppers at 948 TIPS. The Arneville Police Department investigating an attempted ATM theft. Police say four people tried to steal an ATM from Washington State Bank yesterday. If you happen to know who these people are, call St. Landry Crime Stoppers. In Lafayette Parish, the Bayou Vermilion District is looking for the person responsible for illegally dumping debris into the bayou. They posted these photos to their Facebook page of a white truck with a trailer with what appears to be debris. If you have any information on the case, you're asked to reach out to the Bayou Vermilion District through Facebook. On to state news now. Plans will move forward to create the Acadiana Regional Juvenile Justice District. Governor Edward signed House Bill 357 today. The facility will house juveniles temporarily. Under the new law, a Juvenile Justice District Commission of 11 members will be created to control, administer, and manage the affairs of that district. Well, this is just one of 40 bills the governor signed into law today.